Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, everybody. You didn't expect a, uh, a, a, a second Christmas podcast this year, but we decided to bless you. It was not a scheduling error. Nope. We decided to be gracious this year. This yeah. is this is us being kind and generous to it's our audience. It's a present because in the spirit of Christmas, we're giving a present. 100%. So, you know, we thought we'd be nice and just uh, give you guys a little something special because you listen to one Christmas episode and you say, damn, I wish there was more than one a year. So, boom. Another Christmas episode. That doesn't really have much to do with Christmas anyway. Not at all. Not, I, well, I'm sure we'll have conversations. Like, um... Why Santa gotta be white all the time? Yep. Exactly, man. That's, I was, I've been thinking the same thing, man. Mall Santa. More like poop Santa. Why don't... And more subjects like that later on in the podcast. Yeah. And also, uh... Why does Santa not deliver poor children presents? That's that is true. I talk about... Uh, cause there's a, there's a reason for that. Or Jewish children. Yep. And there's a reason for that. It's a, we'll talk about that later too. Um, like the kids in the Middle East. Or Muslim children. Yeah. Well, there are Christian kids in the Middle East, but they don't end up getting presents from Santa mainly cause that's a no fly zone that, that big and part of Russia too. Uh, Most African children do not, do not get gifts from Santa, you know, which is weird because he would only have to melt the snow to give the, you know, and purify that to really give them a, a, a gift yeah. that would, that would last. Honestly, he, I don't know. I mean, I feel like that could change quite a bit. I mean, I think that'd be a lot more of a special gift than giving uh, little Thomas in Indiana uh, a Nerf gun, or or little little Susan uh, uh, an electric scooter with tassels on the handles. Who? who ca- yeah, no, that's yeah. I don't care about that. And he, he doesn't do Russia because Russia charges incredibly high fees to fly over their airspace. So, do you know that? Russia charges such insane fees to fly over their airspace that most commercial flights will will go the other way to avoid flying over Russia. So in Christian, okay, this is uh, Santa Claus isn't a part of Christian lore. Yes, he is. I mean, not within. He's it. in the Bible. No, he's not. Santa Claus. Is in the Bible. <laughs> uh, but like, when you're a kid, to you, he's a part of your, you know, kind of religious shit, right? Yeah. So. I don't know. Is is God is is so God's a god, and then is Santa like a demigod, like Jesus? Yes. Okay. Santa's the demigod that w- was put down on Earth. Like he's, you know, there's different tiers of 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 gods on this Earth. Like Santa is a demigod. Yeah. Is Jesus a god or a demigod? Jesus is a f- is the son of God, but also God. So I would have to say he's like. He's probably the the main character in this in this kind of story we're crafting. Yes, because he has the most complex. He's maybe that's his struggle. He's he's trying to think of how he can uh, put two and two together. And and I, you know, does he have the power of a god or is he just a demigod that people kind of look down on and is looked at more of like entertainment for children? Exactly, he's not a real time god. He's trying to figure out. He's having an identity crisis, and he's the son of the most powerful being in on on this planet. Which sucks because if your dad is the most famous dude ever, you're always going to get overlooked, and you're always just going to be known as the son of that guy, no matter what you do. You know, I will have to say Jesus is still very popular. They pushed Jesus. Hard they did in the New Testament. They okay. pushed. They tried to. They were. They they had a marketing meeting. They were like, "We got to push this guy. This guy is gonna be big. We got to push him." We and love this God him. guy, but I feel like, given the past books we've written, he could come across as a bit stern. And we've we've shown that the the, the, the marketing team, the marketing team's done their job, and they showed that the numbers would would benefit in some sort of positive uh, male a positive male figure because you know. In the- previous books there's a lot of things god did that definitely can come across yeah you know like sodom that that whole thing yeah the city of gays that he yeah um to burn up in fire but i think maybe I mean, the, or, or the, the, just the the wealth of population that he 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 drowned the flood I mean, women the, children animals the flood was um, definitely bird, uh, bird most birds survived. Yeah, pretty much everything uh died mm. except for like birds and yeah you know but he, so he was saying everyone was being sinful. But if you think that's about not it, true. here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I that is, I do believe that is true because even thinking lustful thoughts is a sin. If you think about like if you 
if you even um oh what's it specifically called when you pine for like your neighbor's belongings what is the, covet? What, covet yeah when you covet thy neighbor right so i'm sure there are a lot of people doing that but the difference is they didn't have jesus who 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 died nailed up to some sticks um so they just went to hell yeah they went to hell they went straight to well i don't know did hell exist no did be- god wait Oh, so in the lore, in, in this is like an anime. This, this is like an anime. So hell didn't exist before before God and his, an, his one of his angel friends had gotten a fight, and then he f- fucking sent that bastard down. Get out of here, Lucifer! Yeah. Wait. No. Okay. So Lucifer old, was an angel. Yeah, he was one hundred percent. And he said, "I'm gonna do it my way." He Lucifer was the one who went. God's not so great. I, I could do God's job. And then God ran this whole smear campaign against him. What, yep. if, what, if, what if Lucifer is actually the, the cooler, better one, but they ran this huge smear campaign? You know, they say Lu- Lucifer is like the, you know, he's the ruler of hell. But who's the, who's the person who put him in hell? It wasn't, was it his choice? Uh-huh. Exactly. He was thrown down into the dirt. I remember asking my mom as a kid, I was like, well, mom, if God made everything, why did he make the devil? And she's like, um, I don't know, Matthew. <laughs> But, 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 okay. No, Lucifer, this all happened post the creation of the world. It had to have because the snake, or is the snake's not Lucifer, is it? Or the snake's just a in, in the is, Garden is of Eden? symbolism. It's not directly, it's not like fucking Harry Potter. Come take this fruit. No. I see, I see, I see. I don't think. Whatever the fuck he says. I think that Adam and Eve's story is a metaphor. I don't. What? Yeah. What do you mean? No, 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 it's science. It's, it actually happened. Um, so you and I are related technically. Yes. Uh, but what I gathered was when I, I read Dante's Inferno and there's, you know, the different rings of hell. Mm-hmm. The first ring of hell is for the people that died before Christ came along. Okay. So they're not punished, but they're also, not, they're not like punished. They're just kind of in purgatory. Okay. You know, so it's like. They're still in hell. But instead of sending them to purgatory, they just went, you just go to the first ring first of hell. First ring of hell. It's not that bad. You know, it's not too hot. Still it's, sucks. It sucks, yeah. And they didn't have a choice. Have you played Dante's Inferno, the video game? No, I just Have you seen how they've depicted the circles of hell in that? Mm-mm. I would be interested in playing that for the channel, but I feel like I'd be so fucking bad at it. But then I'm like, I did sec if I if I if I beat Sekiro, I could beat Dante's no. Inferno, right? Well, you could be any game. But there's nudity in Dante's Ooh, Inferno. We'd have to get Justin to yeah. censor out because in the beginning there's a breast that pops out. I remember being young and like looking up the scene and being like, Whoa. Well, Justin doesn't mind if he sent some footage with breasts in it. No. You know, little little something special for him. Exactly. A little Christmas bonus. Um but Dante's Inferno is actually a really good book. Yes. I uh had to read it for school. Most probably, books I had to read were for school, but probably I probably one of my that favorite one books that we read in school or like we're forced to read that's honestly. actually scared me a little bit like it was it was it was creepy i thought it was interesting because like you I, it was so imaginative yeah and and uh i just as a, as a kid when you're reading it or i guess a high school you know you're in high school you're still a kid you're you're just imagination you, i don't know it's it, it was it was a crazy thing it was it was it was epic i so, thought so, i even bought myself a personal copy after really? after i graduated because i just I, I kind of just liked having the book. It's not something that I like go back and read every year and I study, but it's just like I liked it. And like every now and then I'd like to like skim through it and I like just having it. I remember the like the it's last like a good ring classic of hell, book, la- like the lowest one was like the icy one with like the big fish heads or something. I just remember there's like some creepy fish head thing coming through ice and like, you know, I, you know, in, in the game you have to you're you're gonna climb on satan's back and shit right Mm -hmm. you know just like in the story you're gonna climb onto satan you're gonna fucking have sex with his mouth mouth. what are the wait what are the what are the three ones at the bottom there's like satan but then he has the two the two archangels he has judas and he has just one more person dale dale yeah um but yeah it's a a good ass book you know it's it's, they should make a movie out of it psych they actually it's a a trilogy i never watched any kind of movie what was, they probably it, made a movie about it yeah but the book's a trilogy he goes to hell and then he goes to purgatory and then he goes to heaven i think they've made movies that are based on the story you know what i mean just like how uh right star wars is based off of just uh oh the oedipus no not oedipus fuck what you fuck what's his, his name what's his fucking name the other dude Homer? The, the like dude. the Odyssey? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Odyssey. The Odyssey. I forgot the main guy that's in the Odyssey, but Homer wrote it. I'm forgetting that dude's name. 
It's definitely not Oedipus. That's who. That's who, he, he fucked, fucked his, his mom, mom and, and then then he went tore his eyes yeah out. and it was on an island, right? Yep. Didn't he go on an island after he blinding? Did, yeah. Okay. He exiled himself. Wait, what? What is the? I should know the Odysseus. Is Odysseus. Yeah, Odysseus. Okay. Nice. That's sick. Yeah. I was never that into the Odyssey because uh, we just had to study it so much in school, and I was like, it's boring. But like I, I, I thought it was fucking cool. I'd like it a lot now. I, think. I liked the movie with like the claymation monsters and we shit. We watched that in school. And like the stop motion owl, the, like the stop motion uh, robotic owl, the cyclops that was yep. stop motion. <laughs> yep. Yeah, dude. Uh, Medusa was stop motion. I, it's I, pretty sick. I love when movies did that. The stop motion enemies. If you and I make a movie, we say this all the time, and we have so many ideas that if people made a compilation that. Maybe someone will make a compilation of all the, of all our. If we ever made a movie, so we, we need could to have the, put it into one big movie. Exactly. Do that, please. But I was about to say, like, if we were to ever have a movie and there's like a monster, think of like how cool it would be if it was like some stop motion thing. But someone obviously, it's like someone worked really hard on it. It's not just like a play doh gorilla, you know. It could be a play doh. It could be. It could very well be a play doh gorilla. The stop motion. George! Oh no! <laughs> Poltergeist had one, like, uh, and the I don't, I think it's the first Poltergeist, or uh, not the one with Sam Rockwell. No, the old. <laughs> okay. Where <laughs> did, did you and I saw yeah, that one with Sam Rockwell together? We, that one sucked. I didn't. Well, I didn't like it. I remember it not. I didn't think it was that bad. Or I thought it, I thought it was a decent remake. I well, I say things suck when I'm bored, and like I, I know that they're not a. It's not like a bad movie, but if a movie's like a C where it's just borderline average mm. and I'm sitting there like at the end, you know, the, the third act when it's like everything's happened after the climax, the resolution, I'm just waiting. It's like the classic scene of them in the house having breakfast, having one last conversation and maybe sometimes there'll be one last note to linger on or it'll like kind of pan out and like the, it'll have the whole neighborhood or city in shot. Like a book falls off the shelf and they all go quiet when they all laugh together. <laughs> yeah. So like just that if if I'm sitting there watching that and I'm like I'd like I don't yeah. care I don't care I know exactly what's happening. Here's the thing. Knowing exactly what's going to happen doesn't ruin a movie because that's why you rewatch movies again and again. Yeah. But it's just like boring. I, don't know. I just get that. Same same plot. I love the first Poltergeist though. I have never seen the original. Oh, well he drinks So a I love how my first one was the Sam Rockwell. <laughs> I love Sam Rockwell though. He's yeah. good. I still have to see Moon. Is that the one he's on? I don't know. About an astronaut. Oh, Johnny Depp was in a movie about I love a moon. Astronaut Sam movies. Rockwell's about in a movie about a moon. Tom Hanks was. Was he? What's the and movie Gary, called? Gary Sinise. What was the Apollo Thirteen? Oh yeah, that's a good ass movie. A lot of people don't like it because they think it's boring. Because most of the movies just technical, like pull up on throttle C. Okay, but it's it's who directed it. Do you remember? Uh. For some reason, I want to say Ron Howard, but I really don't think it's Ron Howard. <laughs> he could be Ron Howard. I could imagine that. He did The Heart of the Sea, which should have been a rated R movie and should have. Man, they need to make a really good fucking whale Ron movie. Ron Howard. Okay. It was Ron Howard. You were right. Bill Paxton and Kevin Bacon and Gary Sinise. Sinise. It's about to go it. on a rant. Don't you wish there was like a movie made because Ron Howard made... In the heart of the sea or the heart of the sea, you know, the one where Chris Hemsworth is fighting a whale or yeah. some shit. And I like the idea of, uh, you know, man versus whale movie, but I want it to be fucking horrifying and creepy and not like kind of done up in a Hollywood style mm. where you can like, oh, look, it's CGI. And everything. of course, they're going to have to use CGI, but I don't know. Just have it have, get the tone right. They, he made it PG-13, and he kind of skimmed over some of the more horrific parts of the story, which they did touch on, which is like cannibalism and stuff. Cannibalism. But, yeah. I mean, they did touch on, but like, I feel like this should have been a fucking, like, this should have made me, this should have had my hands like this Digging on my your knees. claws into your legs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe that's a problem with me, because I'm pretty sure some people had that reaction with that movie. My mom has... Very intense reactions whenever she's watching a movie in the so theater. My mom talks to mom and goes, oh, <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> hey, let's talk about cannibalism. cannibalism. Would you ever try human flesh? If there were no negative downsides, if there's no kind of like. Like the psychosis if, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there's none of that, if, <sighs> if, if there's no, if, if it's not like you killing someone and being a psychopath, it's like 100% legal, no negative repercussions. The only time I think I would be able to justify myself trying it because i'm curious i am curious what it would be like you know like mm -hmm. that morbid curiosity like, what would that be like uh doesn't mean i actually want to do it but i think if i was uh in some like very 
a remote place with like a tribe, maybe doing a documentary, mm -hmm. and they offered it to me, I might do that out of respect. But uh, I don't. Oof, I don't really want to eat in human. I heard it just tastes like pork. It's just pork's like the closest thing to human. I would probably, if I were to do it, would you gag? I would probably gag, but I'm, but I think I, I couldn't live with like eating someone else, even if they're like, come on, eat me. But if I ever had to go in for some like super invasive or whatever surgery and they had to take off some meat and I could be like, hey, could you grill that up for me? I'd try it. Yeah, I would try it if the it was. The doctor grills it up for you in the same room. <laughs> yeah, if it was like. It's like a hibachi table right next to the operating table. <laughs> like, but, <laughs> but like, it's, I'm not just going in there to eat myself. I'm going in there for something that I really fucking need. And just on the side, it just so happens that they're cutting me open. Some meat may be taken off. You want the tumor on the side or on top? <laughs> Can cannibals are. Uh, there's that Japanese dude that moved to France. I thought he was still alive roaming Tokyo. He is. He's they, he, he didn't go to jail. I thought you said he moved to France. Well, France oh, is Oh, he did he, move he to did the Yeah. He ate the woman. He ate his friend. Oh, was she his friend? Yeah, he befriended her and shit. And then, All with the intention then, of eating her. And killed her and ate her. Damn, dude. And then said he wants... Is this the same guy who's like, I want to eat. I'm going to do it again. I want to do it again before the I die. The Japanese dude? Yeah. Vice did a documentary about him where they interview him. That has to be the same guy. It is, definitely. I, there's probably only one Japanese man that, er, hmm. Because he's going to try again then. He said he wants to. And that should be a little red flag right there, but I can't believe that, like, what, what, what is inside you that make you want to eat human? Because it seems like that happens to some people. Like, there's the, uh, remember that guy, like that German dude put out the ad for someone to eat him? Like, he wanted someone to eat him yeah and someone said yes and then they they came and they ate his penis together and then he killed him and ate him but it was like the guy like consented to it like he cut off his penis they shared it and he's like now you can kill me and eat me yeah and then he did that's a weird fetish there's just Cause, cause, see here's the thing you gotta you gotta skin the you gotta skin them you know you can't you're not eating the skin i imagine it's incredibly messy process of do you eat the skin i mean i guess you could keep the skin on, the skin on. yeah yeah. Oh, now when I think about it like that, a chicken skin's the best part, man. So is it? But our skin's fucking rough. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what it would like. Like how thick is our skin? Wait, what? Did he? Did he? But like, would we have? We do have. We would have. Like, would we have a skin like texture? Because like, I think when cooked, it would be similar to like pork skin like on the outside of pork okay because it's it's like the same type of thing it's oh wow it's recorded in more than 1500 species what is cannibalism mm -hmm. well that's because they have to survive right yeah Which i mean show? that's i guess that's why it started with humans we don't need to be eating people anymore exactly and maybe also, at some point it was good for like a dominance thing it also causes a, uh, I think, psychosis if you eat human like monkey. something with the enzyme or something monkey, yeah, monkey. brain it'll make if you, you go fucking crazy is it if you eat meat or just monkey brain? I think it's just meat. It's if you just eat like primate. primate meat, there's a chance that if you have this thing that it'll like, it'll flip a kill switch and you'll turn into, you'll turn into King Kong. It's like a zombie thing, you know? It's like you get infected. <laughs> yeah. I have been reading about sexual cannibalism. When a female cannibalizes her mate prior to or after copulation. That's what spiders do. And praying mantises. That's why. Why? Why do they evolve? Like what? What? Why? Why? It's like, does oh. the male know or each time, like, it's just like, you know, like how on TikTok, it's like, oh, only girls know about this. They're like, <laughs> hey, let's try to confuse the boys. You know, that type of shit. You guys are like, I'm gonna get some is, pussy, is, some spider pussy. Is this the thing? No! <laughs> we don't tell the boys about this one. It's like just some disgusting spider on TikTok. Do they can, do they, like the spiders like, all right, eat me. Or do you think it's just like, it just happens. Ow. Okay. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Why do they do that? It's like. Look it up. I, I'm, I have the Wikipedia. Look it up. Turn it up. <laughs> uh, it's like a, it's like very Pavlovian with you. I, I could just like signal it. <laughs> Turn it up. <laughs> the prevalence just, of sexual. I need a <laughs> what? Black widow spiders do it. But why? They call them black widow spiders because they eat the male widow. Yeah, but why? I'm, I'm, I'm looking it up. Or I'm just, I'm going through the Wikipedia page. Just for fun. Proposed explanations. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Female Chinese mantis eats a male copulating with her while they're having sex. Wow. 
namely adaptive foraging, aggressive spillover, mate choice, and mistaken identity. I don't know what any of those things are. Wait, so th- wait, so like in the middle of like having sex, they just forget who they're having sex with, and then they go, "Who the fuck are you?" and then kill them and eat them while they're like still fucked. The guy's like, "What's going? Stop!" <laughs> Try to get some slash. Who are you? Yeah. Like, is that is that what's going on? And then there's like aggressive spillover, which means they just go into a rage sometimes where they're just like, they're having sex. They're like into it. Then they get so into it. They like go. Argh! It's like if it's like if it's like if uh, Superman was banging a chick and then he comes and then he opens his eyes and there's just like blood splattered all <laughs> on the wall. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Again. <laughs> it's like, I guess it's like that. For a female primate, they just go into a blind rage it of says, it says carnivorous the activity. It says really aggressive that it can just happen. Okay. Oh, wait, and sometimes the male fakes death and gets away. <laughs> Mate choice. <laughs> Dude, imagine being in that position. Maybe if, I f- maybe if I fake being dead, she'll stop eating me. Like, that's the situation you're put in. Oh, God, God, God. <laughs> stop eating me. Please. Yeah, the, I mean, the mistaken Ow. identity thing is they just, like, Ow. forget. They're like, oh, food. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. I, what if humans did that shit, man? I just imagine <laughs> your mom just taking a taking Jim and just eating him, like like eating him whole. Like <laughs> <sighs> some people are into that type of stuff. I know more people than I ever imagined because once that became bigger on the internet, I was like, "There's a lot of fetishes that, and no kink shaming here. There's a lot of fetishes that I was like, no one's like that's a very specific small thing. I'm like, oh, it's so big. as a whole community." Four inflation, uh, inflation that's a big one, like you and like people blowing up like balloons, belly inflation and stuff, like pregnant women, like just like getting full of air and just being like all all puffed up. I don't, I, I don't understand it, but I'm not judging anyone because I'm sure the people that have that didn't choose to be turned on by vor or uh belly inflation stuff. The best way someone, like, I heard someone explain it was like you know how when your your average atypical alpha male looks at your atypical alpha female mm-hmm. and notices her breasts and bottom he he he, he in sex ed they teach you he he becomes erect right uh-huh. he becomes yeah, aroused but like just picture like you look at it and you go whoa like you have that same fucking thing like, it's not even like you're paying attention to it. It's not like you're like, oh, boobs, whoa, boobs. But. Well, that's what I'm like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but like, you, they, it's just like, imagine like that, but feet and you can't help it. It's just, you see feet and it's like seeing a pair of naked breasts to you. You know, it's, it's just like. It's wired in your brain, I like, guess. Yeah, just in your brain. Like, imagine if you're like sitting with some, like someone. Like, they either pull their pants off or they take their shirt off, revealing their genitalia or sex organs, right? You're going to be like, whoa. Yeah. But, like, now imagine you have that and they're just resting their feet on the table and you just go. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's, it, they can't control it. It's just kind of wired, right? It's, it's not like, a, oh, I just like feet. I decided, I decided to make feet my hobby. I'm kind of pat. I don't have a fetish. I'm just into it. As long as as long as a fetish uh, doesn't hurt anybody, and it, and it doesn't like uh, yeah. I guess I guess is it if it doesn't hurt anyone or you know it's can a consensual thing. I mean, go for it, right? Yeah, that's why people are like censor your feet on the internet, <laughs> dude. We should make a video where we're like walk, dude, in our office tour. We should walk around barefoot and just censor our feet the whole time. <laughs> It's for Patreon only. You'll have to see it on Patreon. Mm-hmm, that's feet pics. Our feet. Our Fuck. little Pete's. Remember, uh, don't sick. <laughs> that shit so much, dude. I don't know why I hate that fucking speak on the internet like that. So we much. talked about this in the talked about a lot Minecraft lately. episodes. Pete's that aren't that haven't come out yet because we recorded a whole session the other day. Yeah, we're back nice. on our Minecraft bullshit, and we're gonna record some. Uh, more uh, tr- truck sim or s- whatever we get work sim. We're just going to start recording more after this podcast. I really want to drive the truck. What truck? And the and trucks. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you can drive it. You can drive the truck. Can't believe we figured out how to get mods and stuff. I, I drove it all through our um, Christmas episodes. Cr- yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's go drive a truck after this. I'm excited. Okay. Oh, we got to film a Q&A first. We do. And then trucks. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Good. And then trucks. And then editing. You know, got some, yeah. got some editing to do. Then we got to come in tomorrow 
and do some more editing. Wait, some ad reads. Oh, shit. The Super Mega Cast is brought to you by Prime Gaming. Prime Gaming is free with your Amazon Prime membership. Right now, you can claim over 30 plus games that are yours to keep forever. Anything from retro and indie games to the biggest titles. You can also claim exclusive in-game offers for popular titles across PC, consoles, and mobile, including Roblox, League of Legends, Assassin's Creed, Star Wars Squadrons, Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, and Destiny 2, with new offers released each week. And if you're a Twitch fan, you'll love the chance to support your favorite streamer with a free monthly Twitch TV channel subscription. You can use that on people that you like. Like your boy Ryan over here at, at twitch.tv slash E-L-I-R-Y-M-A-G-E-E -E -E, if you want. To learn about this month's free offers of Prime Gaming, head over to gaming.amazon.com. Hey, Matt. Yes? This year, I want to eat better and spend less time and money at the grocery store. Do you know a way I can do that? Yeah, I think I might. Is it bu bu butcher, butcher Box? Bu okay, yeah. Butcher Box. Um, Butcher Box is the meat delivery subscription that gives me more time for what matters most, meat. Each month they send a box of the highest quality meat for a better price than the grocery store. Which gives Ryan more time to spend cooking and sharing delicious meals with his dog, Lego. Mm. And luckily, today's sponsor, Butcher Box, believes everyone deserves high quality, humanely sourced meat. I got Butcher Box uh, and I took it home, put it in the freezer, and it was there were all these like pork chops, sirloin steaks, all this stuff. Harrison took them out, cooked them. Oh, oh my God, delicious. Delicious, great quality meat. <sighs> See? I wouldn't be I wouldn't well, be supporting I, something I wouldn't put in my own body. Next next time you gotta invite me to that butcher box party. Mm. Well, Ryan, I don't need to invite you. If you just go to butcherbox.com slash super mega, you can get two pounds of salmon absolutely free with your first box. What the F? Yep. Two pounds of salmon? Two pounds of salmon. Not to mention every month Butcher Box ships a curated selection of high quality meat right to your home. All meat is free of antibiotics and added hormones. Each box has nine to eleven pounds of meat. Enough for twenty-four individual meals. <laughs> Packed fresh and shipped frozen and vacuum sealed so it stays that way. I can customize my box or go with one of theirs. Either way, I get exactly what I want. It's a no-brainer. It's the best meat shipped right to my door, which means one less trip to the grocers. And I don't have to spend as much money on Postmates. Options like 100% grass-fed and finished beef, free-range organic chicken, heritage pork, wild-caught Alaskan salmon, and sugar nitrate-free bacon. It's the way meat should be. It's the most affordable and convenient way to get healthy, humanely raised meat. With ButcherBox, you get the highest quality meat around for just $6 a meal. And they even have free shipping nationwide. Except Alaska and Hawaii. Like we said, you can get two pounds of salmon absolutely free with your first box. Just go to ButcherBox.com slash SuperMega. That's ButcherBox.com slash SuperMega. Yeah, we were here last night until 2. two. Like 2, 2.30. Yeah, we edited for 14 hours yesterday. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oh my god. That's just how it is on the on the holiday season, baby. We got so scared last night. <sighs> okay, so imagine imagine you're alone with your best friend, you know, mm -hmm. in the back of a house and all of a sudden you hear the clear like there's no like no mistaking that? it. It's 100% the sound of your door your front door slamming shut. Like as if someone walked in and shut the door behind. <laughs> yep. And it's what time was it? Probably like nine. Maybe? Yeah, it was dark. It's nighttime, and, and we have all the lights turned off in the house too. Well, most of the lights have shorted out. Oh, for sorry, some the plex. Yeah, the plex. So basically, like we hear the door just, and you could feel it too because it's yeah. kind of like, uh, and Ryan and I just both stop and just look at each other at the same time. And our, there's this intense silence from our desks, and we're just like, you heard that too? That that was the door. What? <laughs> That was the door. And we're like, we're, I was like, fuck. At first I was like, maybe it's Jackson. And I'm like, no, they're well, all you out called of town. out. You were like, hey, just to see yeah, I if it like, was Hello? anyone. And then, and then I, I did the whole thing where like I threw my arms up. I'm like, well, I mean, we have to check. Like we, mm -hmm. we can't just, you know, sit in here. So we crept out into the dark hallway <laughs> and, uh, meticulously. Oh wait, before, before that, <sighs> this, we, we, this is the shit that scared me the most. This is the part that's the most interesting when we get. So we heard the door slam shut. Right. There's it's there's a when when the door opens there's no slamming sound, but w only when it shuts, only when it's being closed. And we tested this out several it's like times. Like a very loud like Yeah, exactly. So when we go and get to the to the front door, it's open. Yeah, it's just open. And we were just like Why And like it's is nighttime it open? it's just Exactly. And it's like <laughs> it's like okay, we heard it slam shut. So why is it open now? 
this is like, did they realize and like sneak out? Or are they still in here? So now let's get the shit out of me. I was my heart was pounding. So now we're having to go through each room. I'm like checking in the closets, checking like in the you know it's because the thing is, it's crazy. It's the audience would probably think we're we're nuts. It's like no one broke into your fucking house. But it's like the thing is. When someone does, like, if someone did, I'd be glad I I took those steps at least, I guess. Yeah, I don't want to go sit back down and be <laughs> editing some goofy <laughs> fart videos and someone walks in with an axe and gets me in the back of the head. Like, if, I, if I'm if i going to die due to some burglar, I at least want to win the game of hide and seek. Yeah, because then you can go down with that that accomplishment. Yeah, I, they're, and, and they're going to, fuck, they found me! And they're and like, we die the winner. That's true. We they they die, flip the, the board winner. and they have to live with the fact that they flip the Monopoly board. They have to live with the fact that they lost hide and seek. <laughs> exactly. And that just, they they probably won't ever kill again after that. So we kind of did something good. But we checked like the, every the, corner the I went shower. Around. I was like <sighs> behind curtains, checked every closet, checked the garage. Oh my God. Checked dude. the perimeter of the house. That was scary. It was so scary. And then we were good. Yeah. And, and then, but then later you heard, you said you heard something like, like a, clamber. like, like a, like a clamber. You and, were. I was editing. We were ordering food and I was laying on the floor next to Ryan's desk. And, and I had my headphones on. And then I just hear like from the kitchen, just like, it sounded like a drawer, like Good. opening with like silverware inside. Yeah. Like, and I, and I was like, Ryan, Ryan, you're like, what? I heard something. <laughs> we went out again. There's nothing. Yeah. Except that drawer, that drawer was open. I, I think I opened that. it. You, you I was looking so for silverware. Yeah. It's a, uh, I don't know. It, maybe it's a ghost. I was saying like, I'd much The wind's rather, pretty shitty though. My, yeah. my my door's blown open plenty of times. Like we're all come home. But why just, did it slam shut? Huh? I get it getting blown open, but what would make the? It's a heavy door. Why would it slam shut? The wind blowing another way, like creating a suction type thing. I don't know. Because like that's the thing. Like a door doesn't just blow open. Sometimes it goes. Doof, 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 doof. Like it gets blown open, then gets sucked back, and gets blown open again. Or maybe we just uh, didn't have it closed all the way. I guess maybe a man just walked in and was like. This isn't my house. And just walked back out, but he didn't shut the door. That's very potential. He could have like, or, you know, he walked in when, oh, fuck. And like slammed and left, but like didn't close the door. So when it slammed, it just bounced back a little after he like ran. That's why I was open because it slammed and bounced back. Because if, if you do that hard enough, it bounces back open. Yeah. We're figuring it out, man. We're putting this shit together. We still don't know 100%. When it, most likely the wind. Probably the wind. I'm going to choose to believe that so when I'm here by myself at night in the future, <laughs> I'm not going to start getting paranoid. Being here by it's yourself so at scary. night sucks sometimes because it's just, it's just creepy. The super megaplex is so scary. Some of the lights aren't working. They're like flickering, turning on and off too. Most like of no joke. Work. Like this isn't like, oh, we're living in a shanty joke. No, like lights are blowing at like there's a short <laughs> over somewhere. There, so we have to call our landlord to get it fixed because there's a short somewhere where like some days, like half the lights won't work. Some days they do. And the light directly above my desk when I'm editing every 10 minutes will just yep. turn on and then just go out. So like I'm here at night by myself and in a dark room and it's like, ting, comes on. I'm like, <laughs> oh, fuck. And then it goes out and I'm all, it's all dark. But dude, the fucking hallways, terrifying. Narrow night. hallways. Narrow hallways that are tall and just go back into darkness. Yeah. And you're like back there is doors and a garage and it's like, fuck. I hate being here by myself. The scariest thing is when I uh, set the alarm mm -hmm. and I'm about to leave. And then I remember I have to get something like from the garage. So I have to run through the house in the darkness into the garage. It's pitch black. I did that once because I had to go in the garage to get something. <laughs> All the lights were off. Scared the shit out of me. I was waiting for someone just to step out and stab me. I'm more of just like, I don't want to see anything in my periphery. Oh. <sighs> You know what I mean? That's why that's that's how I get so scared when you do that shit to me. Yeah. You like just stand in like a corner. Of course. I noticed it's planned. The is periphery that, shit is it's more not like ghosts. I like I don't believe in ghosts and sh stuff like that, but it's it's more like I don't want to I, I just don't want to have a nightmare. I don't want my brain to take hold of an image and then obsess over it and then I go to sleep and then I have a stressful night of sleep cuz I wake up go <gasps> I guess I'll go back to sleep. And then the dream continues for some fucking reason. When none of my good dreams continue, only my scary fucking dreams Literally continue. Literally every time I have a sex dream, something happens where it's like, ah. Oh, like I'm, right when it's good. Like, like, like right when it's the best it can be. And I'm like, oh wait, I don't have any condoms. Shit. So then the rest of the dream, me driving to the store to get condoms, then I wake up. <laughs> yep. I'm serious. And the All whole, and the like whole dream is you like racing to get back. It's like, oh fuck. And when I wake up, I'm like, god damn it. I was almost there. I had it for like two minutes. 
or I'll have a dream I'm having sex and then like all of a sudden she's like, hold on, I gotta go call my dad. And then just like leaves. And then so that's the end of the dream. I'm like, why? I rarely right. have, I rarely have dreams, but man, when it's a sex dream, Boom. it's, it's, it's the best kind of VR there is. It is. I never, I rarely have sex dreams. Probably like once or twice a year, maybe for me. Yeah, probably, probably, yeah, same. Maybe three, four times a year I have a sex dream. But it's never, I've never had a, a sex dream that like to completion. I've never had a dream where I just have sex, blow my load, and that's the dream. Always something. <laughs> no, I, it never, never, never finishes. It's always like, oh, wait, I'm not using a <laughs> con. I gotta go get condoms. <laughs> Or like, or like a, or the dream will just change. Like I'll be having sex and all of a sudden I'm on a train and I'm just like, oh, this is my dream now. For me, it sucks because I feel like uh, it, when I have one, it works more like this. Where like it'll be happening. Then I'm like, no, I'm dreaming. No, wait, no, I didn't make this realization. No. And then I'll wake up because you know when you, re this happens, like when I realize I'm in a dream, I'll start to wake up. Like it's not like instantly, but I've had many of many a dream where I start to realize it and then it kind of fades into me. Like then I wake up and open my eyes and I'm like, ah, and then I try to go back to bed and I can't. And I'm like, oh, just take, just take me to sex world. I don't think I've ever had a lucid dream. Like, like in my dreams, I can control what I'm doing, but I don't know it's a dream. That usually happens. Not like there's only, okay. There's only one time I had a lucid dream and I actually controlled my actions. Cause usually whenever I like, I'm like, this is a dream. I wake up right afterwards. Um, it was a dream. I think I was in elementary school. I can't remember when I had it, but in the dream, I was in elementary school nice. and I was just walking around my old elementary school. And that, that was, it was just a simple dream. And I was like, Oh, am I in a dream? Cause I don't go here anymore. Oh, this is a dream. I can do anything I want. Um, and then I turned into a frog and just hopped around. <laughs> And that, that's the only time, because the thing is, the dream could have just been about me discovering I'm dreaming and then turning into a frog. I, like, you know what I mean? Right, Like, right. I could have very well not been aware. But because the dream was about that, to me, I was aware and controlling what I was doing. I want to I wanna try it. So, at least from my perspective, I I was in a, just walking around and I turned into a frog and started hopping around. What is it with school dreams? Because still at almost 25... I have dreams every single week that take place in my high school every single week because you have such a dreams. strong connection to like that to like the, the, there's so much of that visually that is in your brain due to like repetition right? yeah but also same with the house I grew up in and I don't have dreams there you know yeah well it's weird because the dreams I have at school are always the same where it's always the first day of school and I'm like trying to find my classes and I can't get my schedule right. Mm -hmm. Or it's the last day of school and I'm I'm like, I'm done with high school. I'm holy shit, I'm done with high school. I and actually I run don't think the, I, I have, the bus. I don't I don't think I have like school dreams anymore. I have them so much. I also have a very frequent dream where it'll change something to be school. A big recurring one is I'm in a really big airport, like a huge airport. Okay. And I'm trying to catch my flight, but I'm in like the wrong terminal, so I'm going really fast uh to get on my plane. And I never miss it. I always get on the plane. But uh, like leading up to that, I'm like trying to pack my bags and like I just can't pack fast enough. And I'm like missing certain things. And I'm like going around the airport finding like there it is. And I'm like freaking out when I miss my flight. I've never had like I've had a dream that continues, but I've never had a reoccurring dream. The, uh, well, I have one reoccurring dream. I've had it like two or three times. It always like it's not the same dream, it's but, it's, but it's but it's but it's almost like. Uh, um, the same location and same cast of folks, just with a, a different scenario. So, like, it's always in the same house with the same people about the same person, and so that's it's 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 like linked to trauma shit. Mm. So, like, I wonder if that's why, like, I have that. I haven't talked to anyone about sleep, so I'm interested to see like how that affects dreams your weird. dreams. Yeah. I mean, like your dreams are definitely heavily affected by like what goes on in your life. I don't, I don't necessarily have the belief that like all like dreams all mean something. Where it's like I saw this symbol in my dream. Mm -hmm. It's like I think sometimes your brain's just throwing shit out. I think they can mean something, not always though. And um, my one, I didn't start getting reoccurring dreams until maybe like a uh, two years ago. Maybe mm -hmm. like I only had one reoccurring dream before that which was I was at my grandma's house, which is like, it, it was uh, near the beach. So it was on stilts. 
uh, one of those, and I'm there with like my whole family, um, like extended family too. Is it rocking back and forth like in the series of unfortunate events? It's going. (laughs) (laughs) Well, then I look out at the ocean. I see all the water receding, and then a huge tsunami comes, and it like rushes under the house, and I'm freaking out and like trying to get higher up, and then the dream goes like blurry, and then I come back and the house is just floating in the middle of the ocean. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, really fucking scary. It sounds like, horrifying, but when you wake up in your head, you have to be like, "I experienced that." Because when you're dreaming, you're terrifying. kind of you're kind of experiencing these situations. But at the end of the day, like it's like that was a VR experience. And <laughs> but then you don't really remember it too much. At like when you wake up, it's like quickly starts to. But fade. I have that dream like maybe once or twice a year, and then I found out that my mom, my sister, my aunt, and my uncle all have, all the, have the exact same. Dream. Really? I'm like I don't like that. At Probably because y'all grew up in a uh, Charleston, right? It, and there's house, always con- there's, the, there's always that constant fear of flooding. You even said it, didn't you say it was like in the Charleston Beach area or whatever? Yeah, and also that house is where my grandma died. So maybe that has something to do with it. That's why we all, and we're all together. It's weird. Um, and I also have dreams where I'm on the beach and I keep like huge, I'm just looking at like massive waves. I have that all the time. Massive tits. I look at this just huge tits bouncing <laughs> on my face. Nipples erect. <laughs> oh, I spit over the mic. No, but I, I just watched these huge waves, and I'm like, oh, I, I don't want to go out there. When you were when fun. you were a kid, because you brought up waves, it just sent me back to a nostalgic period, right? Um, did you ever just kind of have fun when you were a, probably like half your height young, that you are yeah. now, a young lad, just letting the waves fucking bully you? Like you yeah. just like go, like you want the waves, waves to be rough, so you're like spinning and like going around and... You like, see the big crash coming, you just run yep, at it. Just, yep. Pfft. And then you're just blown back. Like, I miss that. But now, like, I can't do that as, like, a 200-pound grown man. Yeah, you the know? longer I, like, the longer my body became, the more it started to hurt. Because it would start, like, digging me and, like... But I remember being, like, a rag doll when I was younger. It was fun when just you little. Yeah. When I was in Maui, I... I'm sure uh, if I was fit, we could still, like, be all, you know, have fun with waves. But the, now my body hurts. Well, what sucks said. the most is when the wave... uh throws you down and drags you against the sand underneath and the <laughs> yeah. sand is rough because in Maui the sand was all like uh, really like coarse it wasn't like fine and the waves were huge one day when I went swimming at this one little beach they had to be like 10 11 feet and I was like oh shit these are huge but I, I still tried to go out and like you know yeah have, have some fun because I'm like I'm not gonna die and they'd pick me up and bah! <laughs> just and slam, slam me down and then I would fucking just I would hit the ground like my back and it would just drag me and I'd be all scraped up and like I wouldn't be able to come back up for a minute. Who's calling me? It's a 1-800 number. Not important. If it's a collect call, gross. Oh, I know what it is. What is it? It's the sleep people reminding me that I have a call in 20 minutes. Got it. They said they would remind me. Yeah. Waves are fun as fuck though. They are. I do love playing in big waves. Drowning's one of my biggest fears so it's scary but it's like the feeling of just like I don't like swimming in the ocean so I don't do that anymore so when you just see a big wave like right coming up at you like and it hasn't crashed yet but you know it's about to crash the thrill of that is very I wonder why that happened to me when I was younger I loved going out into the ocean and then I'd say it was probably somewhere around late high school to early college I was like mm, kind of creepy do you have any scary experiences with the ocean like a, a few but not like horrible like I always hated going into the ocean in terms of because I because in my head I'm like I just know at one point during this week long trip I'm gonna run into that asshole that one asshole crab and I and I always did and it was just I'd be walking around you know waist high even chest or chest deep whatever water and then at one point you know I'd, I'd step and I'd feel a little pinch and it's a crab and every single time I try to run away and that fucking crab chases after me. So I just have to fucking get out. You're in his turf, I, dude. I can't have fun with a crab constantly trying to cut my feet open. It's not like one of the big blue crabs. <laughs> yeah. Dude, those suck. <laughs> They're just like running around. Fucking like, eh, 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 get out. Just pinching shit. It's like, bro. I'm it's, like, stop. I'm just trying to walk around and you, like chill and relax. You have so much space. <laughs> I know. What are you protecting? Like... They they have all of the ocean floor. I can't even see what they're doing. That's not fair. It's a surprise attack. I accidentally. It's probably because I, you know, when you accidentally step on one and then both of their claws come up, they're like, "Hey!" You ever had? Because I used to yeah. go uh, cr- cr- crab hunting, where you just go into like the behind the dunes into marshy areas where all the pluff mud is and shit, and you just 
try to just hunt for crabs in the little pools. And usually you just step on a few and they just get pissed and be like, get off of me. I hated stepping on a, well, every time my foot touches something and it moves in the ocean, I freak out. So it's like, if I lightly hit, you don't know what it is. Um, (laughs) And the worst, the worst is stepping on a stingray, dude. They oh go, they go, yeah, they're, they're they, they. I've only done that like I think once, and it scared the absolute shit out of yeah, me. Yeah, it's like because I was like, I just thought it was like a huge fit in my in my head. Of course, the first thing is shark. Yeah, it's always <laughs> it's, but that's why now when I go in the ocean, I don't take steps. I drag my feet because mm. when you drag your feet, it scares off things around. Okay, because like the the sand that comes up in the. Jesus Christ! Though I remember like just being, I was swimming. Where I couldn't touch. I love going out, like, where I can't touch and swimming there. Mm-hmm. I, Only with a friend, though. I can't do that by myself. My favorite was, like, around chest deep, and you're starting to have to get on your tippy toes a little the bit. The waves will lift you up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's, that, that was my fun height. Because if I was in the ocean and I couldn't, like, touch or I had to kind of go double my height, I was like, no, this is fucked. Because that's what it's like. I I'm die. chum. Yeah, sharks are scary, but the odds of being attacked by a shark are, like... So astronomically low, yet I saw a shark attack once. And the uh, odds of someone bursting through your front door and shooting you in the face are low, but yet you you lock your front door, don't you? You lock your back door as well, I'm sure, when you sleep. It's true, yeah. You know, you're more likely to become president than... Oh, fuck. I knew that. I had this yesterday. I don't remember what the thing was. Get attacked by a shark? No, not get attacked by a shark. I was about to be like, that ain't true. Give me, hold on a second. I got to. I really need to. This is killing me now. How do people actually find out the likelihood? Because there's so many like, like socioeconomical like problems. I guess uh, st- statis- like, statistic statisticians. Because there's like someone from a low income upbringing definitely has a lower chance of becoming president than someone who was brought up into like a political family. Yeah, there right? are there are factors, but statistic people take all that into account true, somehow. True. I hated statistics, dude. It was so hard. I took AP statistics and I got a two on the exam. It was to, it was to prepare you to 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 catch all these fake news out there, you know? Yeah, absolutely, man. Poop. It prepared me for my career as a YouTuber. Man, I just I remember my teacher messaged me on Facebook after I got a two nice. on the exam and he was like, Matthew, I'm I'm sorry that I failed you. I should have been a better teacher. And I was like, He did fail you. I was like, He didn't fail, you didn't give me a failing grade. I just failed the AP exam. And that's my own fault. But you, which means you didn't get any credit to go to college, which means that you didn't have any, what was the statistics? Yeah. You didn't have any math uh, credits going into college. You could have had a math credit. A good two. one, too. Was it one or two credits? Uh, I don't know. But what sucked, okay, so the teacher before him was this stupid woman. Uh, named stupid Barbara. bitch. Her, Fucking Barb. Her name was the Barbara. dumb bitch. She was, and she got fired. <laughs> She stabbed a kid's hand with a pencil. Got fired. So she is a bitch. Because uh, my, my friend uh, wasn't getting it. And he raised his hand. He's like, can you explain? She's like, what don't you get? Everybody gets it but you. To you? No, to this kid. Oh, okay. And uh, she had a lot of outbursts that got her in trouble. But one of them was uh, she slammed her hand down with a pencil and went into someone's hand. Not like, but like it like cut them up and they had yeah. to get it bandaged. So she got in trouble. Um, and then the day she got fired, the resource officers just, no one knows what happened. They just walked in, escorted her out. And she was never seen again, but she, I, I had CP like math with her. No, no I didn't have CP. <laughs> I, I had CP math with her, which is the most basic shit. And you know, that shit's kind of easy. So I did okay. And she's like, Matthew, you're doing good in this class. I'm gonna recommend you for AP statistics. I was like, Oh, okay. Which is literally like a completely different ball game from what I was doing. So, of course, I failed that shit. I only had to deal with AP literature and history. I had literature. That's it. I wanted history, but I wasn't that good at the tests. I don't know how I got into some of my AP classes. I was like, I'm a fucking CB student. Same. I was, I was, I'd say my average was a B minus. Solid yeah. B minus. I got a four on the literature exam, though. I, f- I thought AP was only meant for like A plus students. No. They allow dummies in as well. If you're an AP, don't use it as a as a way to brag. Just remember, Ryan McGee was an AP. Just remember, so was my, both. Super Mega Boys <laughs> yep. AP. And you've and you've seen how, how stupid we are, especially in like one of our first podcasts. <sighs> yeah, it's bad. <laughs> I had so to make, like, 
Don't don't. I mean, it's nice that you're an AP, and it's good that you're. If you are an AP, take advantage of it and get those college credits. If if college is something that you plan on doing, that will save your parents a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, but I I had AP art, and basically AP art like we you don't learn anything. AP art. Yeah, you don't learn anything. You just have to submit a portfolio at the end of the year, and then that's your they grade it like on the AP scale. How do you grade art? Exactly right. How so? Like in art class, whenever we had projects, and like we'd have some creative project. I never understood how I or some students would get like C's. I'd be like, what do you mean? Isn't this all just kind of. I think they're based on like, well, that looks really good. Mm, that that doesn't, doesn't look, look good. You're not good. It's like, what do you mean I'm not. Like, I understand I'm not good, but this is just what I can do. I'm, this is my interpretation. So, I tried to be all fun and creative with every project I did. I sometimes make, it didn't yeah. pan out. It's hard sometimes, man. Art's hard. I had to make 20 pieces for my portfolio to submit at the end of the year. Which then the judges look at and determine what my score is, but <laughs> scoring art. I know I love so it. stupid one to five. I guess they have to if they're going to make it a like if they're going to make it a, a class in in the educational system. They have to have some sort of way to test and you know. But the best the thing was I I goofed off all year and then like literally two as weeks, art students do yeah and two weeks before it was due I was like I have two pieces and I was freaking out. So I just pulled out of my ass these like digital pieces I whipped up and I got a four. Nice. So you're, you're an artist. Yeah. I whipped it. it it's a really shitty stuff looking back. I don't know why they gave me a four. Maybe they, they like the colors I used. I just made all these like portraits of people that looked like they were like stained glass, but they weren't stained glass. It was mm -hmm. Photoshop. Something like that. And I traced all the black lines. It was the easiest like projects for me to pass were in college it was an it was a, an art class it was a film class like a film studies class and if you had to make a short film or whatever those are always my favorite projects because you just it's so easy you just do the prompt and then you can be as creative as you want you can edit it as stupid and i still got hundreds on like remember that uh cow video first date oh with yeah Syndigo? was that for school yeah, that was for that was for my uh, I think final project for oh, a college class or something that. like that. That's cool. And so Daniel and I did all the work for that, and Daniel didn't even go to USC, and and all of the people who did the project with me just kind of we used their I guess apartment, and they just kind of sat around and watched us because <laughs> uh, I don't know they didn't offer to help. They, one of them oh one of them was like I'll, I'll do lights. I'm like okay, and so they plugged in like. A light that a light. I brought or something. I did it. All right. So, and in the credits, I credited them. I don't know if it's it's not on the Syndigo one, but probably on the Vimeo one. I credited that. I credited them as like lights directing, like <laughs> all this bullshit. Because I had to. I couldn't just credit them as nothing. I know. I used your place. I just uh, and you stand stood around. But it was so stupid. Like it was. It's about a. It was probably cringe looking back at it now. I'm sure, but like. I had a good fucking time making it because I just remember I was like, ha, 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 ha. take this college class, you little filmmaker, <laughs> and every I, other kid in those. I can get a high score making this stupid shit. <laughs> Dude, the kids in those media art classes and film classes are insufferable because most I, of them don't give a shit. Yeah, and they then the ones the that do grade. give a shit give too much of a shit where they just want to show off to the teacher about how much they know about film. And I remember I had to do this. I had to go to a three hour lecture every week. That was like intro to media arts mm -hmm. because I was switching my major over to media arts and it was a prereq I like needed um, and you can't test out of it. And it was so boring because it'd literally be like three hour lecture like today. We're going to show you how to use the text tool in Photoshop. And I'm like, oh. I just can't believe like I'm trying to go back to that point in time. It is probably the most foggy is me going to classes at school because I did go to class. No one remembers the classes. Everyone remembers everything else about college. But I do remember, you know, getting there early, sitting in like the third row of some boring computer class trying to get by and some pay somewhat attention and get the notes in some way. And then, you know, I remember going to class. I remember waking up early. Those, those sometimes those cold mornings in South Carolina. Cold. Nothing compared to, of course, I guess, like, the Canada, north, yeah. you know, but... It got cold for us in the south. Exactly. 19 degrees is cold. That's, that, that's really cold. No matter where you are, that's cold. Yeah. Except people in, like, Wisconsin are like, No! That's warm! Ah, freezing is normal! For me, 
there's fucking places like in Russia where it gets like what's I'm gonna say what the coldest temperature ever recorded on earth is. Give me your give me your best bet. I don't know, dude. I wouldn't be able to tell I how it would be high up. It would be like the peak of a mountain, right? I'd imagine. This is recorded at ground level, actually. Holy really? shit. At, at, at the Soviet Vostok station in, Ar- in Antarctica on July 21st, 1983, negative 128.6 Fahrenheit. Jesus. Negative 89 Celsius. What the fuck? Would that just freeze you on the spot? Would that turn you into an icicle, like, the moment you step outside? I think you would get, like, cold like cold burns the second you expose your skin. Your eyes would freeze. Like the, cause they're the liquid and stuff. Okay. I hate that, man. But that's just a ground level. Is there one that's, 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 that's not a ground level? Damn, do you have, it's like right at the South Pole. I could deal with it. I could go outside in my underwear in that, in that temperature. There are videos of like Russians that just come up from the ice and then they're just like eating ice cream. I think I mentioned this before. I, you know what? No, I, I gotta stop doing that where I'm like, I think we already mentioned this. We can't, oh. Is it is it about time? Is it about time for that for that for that sleep call? It's two fifty six. They said it was at three. Why are they calling me so many times before? Maybe they're making sure that you know. Here, give me a second. You do. Merry Christmas. Okay, the call went well. The call went well. Yeah. Oh, I have. To, I forgot. I I forgot to do it last time, and I'm sure uh, my 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 Twitch users would be upset with me. Oh, what happened? Um, so I said I'd only do this once, but a few uh, a few streams ago, uh, someone donated a very generous amount of money to me, and then donated another generous oh. amount of money, and then told me that that was actually for you and not me. But they donated, what? yeah. So, and I told them I'd give you I'd give you the fifty dollars. Ser- fifty dollars? Yeah, because I, I, they said it was for you and not for me, and I said okay. You said it, but this is going to be the only time I'm going to be able to do this. I don't want like a thousand donations that say this is to Matt Watson. I, I'm not, I don't think that's, that's a bad not because that's not going to Matt Watson well, if people anymore. Did that, that's that's going straight to me. Well, that's fraud. No, that's embezzlement. That's no, stealing. it's not. They're they're donating through my link. But this 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 wonderful viewer, um, I, I will I will uh, follow through for them. Because I made a bit out of it on on the like Finn Mom, on the like stream. Fifty bucks. Yeah, let me. I just got to pull it up real quick. So you're about to be fifty bucks richer. No way. Yeah, hold up. I just Yo, gotta, what's up? It's fifty bucks, Richard. Almost there. Oh shit! I have to type it out again. Sorry. Just. Uh, I'm just gonna say Twitch donation. Okay. Okay, and there. Hold up. Hold up. Turn it up. It says it's paying you. It's not done yet. It's going. It's, it's going. loading. Wait, wait. Let me uh, turn on my notification sounds. We'll see if this uh, comes through. It's taking a bit. I don't know why. That's not it. That's a different email. That's a different email. That's a, that was an email. That's a text message. That's a text message. Um, I, I can't tell if it's frozen. It just kind of says pay. Oh, and Venmo gets like the 99% thing. Yeah. It just does that sometimes. It just sits. Well, I'm just going to... I'm just gonna leave it and come back and open it back up. Just go to the bank and give me a fifty dollar bill. I'm gonna try again real quick. Um, The fifty dollars Twitch donation. Like it doesn't want me to have the fifty dollars. You're not just messing with me, so you can keep it, right? No, 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 no. See, oh, there we go. Okay, Okay. there it is. Ryan paid you fifty dollars. No Twitch donation. Okay, dude. Thanks, man. Yeah, of course. Very sweet. So, so now can't get mad at me. They can't come back and say you lied and you kept the money you you said on stream you were going to give to Matt and didn't give it to him in the last podcast like I should have. But this is another this is a, this is another uh, Christmas episode. So another uh, gifts of giving, Matt. Gifts of giving. Thank you, man. It's the it's that time of the year. <coughs> yeah. Oh. Well, this is this comes out on YouTube on Christmas Day, but it's it's going to be earlier on other platforms. So whenever you're watching this, we hope that you guys enjoy. And enjoyed Snowy Mega this year because we worked very hard on it uh, and did a bunch of uh, fun new shit. Yeah. And uh, we can't wait for 2021, but we'll talk about that in next week's podcast. We're already recording content for it as we speak. So, well, 
as we speak. Not as we speak. As as we speak, we are about to record. We are about to record more content <laughs> that is specifically 2021 content. And we've already recorded 2021 20, content. We have. So thank you all for your support. It means so much. Uh, and we love you all. And uh, see you next time. Bye.